Hello, I'm Jane Urquhart. I'm a writer, and this is not my first time in Halifax. I am here to tell you that I was extremely lucky to uh, A, graduate from university, given my social life at the time, and B, to actually get a job after I graduated from university. And that job was as assistant to the information officer of the Royal Canadian Navy. And <laughs> I must tell you that uh, I knew nothing about the Royal Canadian Navy. And apart from that, I had been, of course, a beautiful person doing my thing at university during a very anti-militaristic time. Um, that should give you some idea how old I am. Um, and uh, when I became the assistant to the information officer for the Royal Canadian Navy, it felt like such a terrible sellout for about six hours, after which I fell fully in love with the Navy, with the ships, with the submarines, and with my job. Um, it took me a little while, however, to learn everything about the Royal Canadian Navy, and as a result, I am here to tell you that they used to call me misinformation. <laughs> but it was actually the perfect term for me because uh, I think they anticipated in some way or another that I was going to go on to write fiction, which I did with great enthusiasm. But at the time, it was, uh, it was, it was fascinating to learn so much from so many people in Halifax. And being here today and being at Pier 21, I have once again learned something I didn't know. And that is that in spite of the fact that we are here today celebrating 150 years, in fact, we, none of us would have been legally called Canadian citizens until 1946, a mere three years before I was born. And um, up until that time, we would have been called, and I wrote this down before I got up here, we would have been called British subjects residing in Canada. So that would be equally true for my ancestors, about whom I'm going to speak today. And I feel that I'm in the perfect place to do so, since I am standing in Pier 21, a building dedicated to the memory of immigration and to the, to the future of immigration and to the whole notion that I believe is absolutely essential for all of us to understand, and that is, that unless we are First Nations individual like the Mi'kmaq on whose traditional lands we now are holding this marvelous event, we are immigrants and many of us, many of us, including my antecedents, are or were refugees. My family, the Quinns, were of course Irish immigrants. They were, uh, I mean, my great-greats go back, so many great-greats that I don't even count them anymore. I just say old great-great. So old great-great came to this country in the 1840s. Recently, I went up to the old homestead of old great-great and was astonished to find, I hadn't been there for about 30 years, I was astonished to find that the stumps that he and his sons pulled out of the ground in the 1840s are still there in the stump rail fences that surround the property. Property that was not very good, in fact, almost impossible to farm, property that is north of Lake Ontario at a point where the Canadian Shield has a ribbon or two that comes down into the southern part of Ontario and makes the plowing of the land impossible. Even my grandfather used to say the first crop every year was boulders. But what I want to tell you about is how they got here. They left Britain, or they left probably, they left Ireland for Britain, left from Liverpool on, on probably on what would have been called a coffin ship. The ships themselves were not well maintained. The immigrants on the ships often died long before they arrived in uh, the St. Lawrence River and Gros Eel, which was the Pier 21 of the time. Once they arrived in Gros Eel, they were usually kept in fever sheds for a while to see whether or not they had typhus, if they hadn't already died of typhus on the ship. In fact, my ancestors were very lucky. They uh, managed the, uh, the, the crossing without 
losing a single member of a family of nine. However, most Irish were not that lucky. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to bring to your attention is uh, a, a black rock in Montreal, which was hauled out of the ground seven years after the worst year of immigration and um, refugees for the Irish, and that would have been in 1854 that the rock was pulled out of the ground by Irish laborers. The rock in question was moved out of the ground uh, for the building of the Victoria Bridge in Montreal, and underneath that rock, the Irish, uh, the Irish laborers of Montreal found the remains of 6,000 of their friends and relations who had died in the fever sheds in Montreal. Now this is a very grim story, however, it has hope in it, and that's why I'm telling it here today. The rock was moved out of the ground and turned into a memorial. The actual location of the Victoria Bridge was moved as well. And the people who had been involved in the building were able to convince their bosses and their owners that these refugees who had met an unhappy end were worthy of being memorialized and worthy of being respected. Gradually, the Irish were included in Canadian life in a way that has become vibrant and meaningful in spite of the fact that when they arrived, the population of Canada was only about a million and over 400,000 Irish were introduced into Canada during a period of about 10 years. Many of these people were ill. One of the most moving stories is the story of how the people of Quebec went down to the fever sheds, not only to nurse and try to bring back to health these people who were so desperately ill, the mayor of Montreal himself went down to nurse the sick and actually died of typhus. Many nuns and priests also. But, they, but the people of Quebec also adopted the orphans who were left alone as a result of the deaths of their parents. And to this day, you can see wonderful Quebecois people with red hair and freckles, some with the, uh, who have first names that would have been the last names of their families from the 1840s. Gradually, as I say, things became much, much better for the Irish. Toronto was a very resistant city because it was very Protestant and into it came 30,000 starving, desperate Catholic Irish people. But again, the people of Toronto came to understand them, came to include them in things, and now we have, um, as of 1910, for example, St. Michael's College, Catholic College of, at University of Toronto was incorporated into the larger University of Toronto. So I guess the, the, um, the, what, the thought I want to leave you with today is that we are all immigrants. We're, many of us are refugees, unless we are First Nations, and that means that we all have something in common, something to bring us together. It's difficult to come to a new land. It's difficult to adjust to whatever happens to be the moment that you enter. But as previous speakers have said, Canada is a wonderful country because it is constantly evolving, because it doesn't have a set notion of who we are. It doesn't have, a, have a, an identifiable identity. We can't just say Canada is and come up with a standard answer, and that is our strength. We will survive because we are so adaptable. Thank you very much for your attention.